When you think like, you know, we have 26 million people, we have 82,000 plus, and in Bangladesh, there are 175 million people, and they have far less than us, far, far, far less than us. So there's definitely nothing to shout about. Oh, no, I think we should be happy that it's coming down, definitely. Yeah. But but the nature of HIV is that you can't be complacent and, and be, just because it's, it's, it's coming down that we can relax. And, you know, I mean, I think this would be the time to even intensify because when it's, when it's low, you know, then it's easier to prevent. It probably needs, like, deeper analysis mm. like if it's coming down where is it coming down yeah um i mean the largest group is still drug users so maybe it's coming down among drug users, yeah but is it growing anywhere else then maybe we have to refocus yeah. certainly i think from my own clinical experience we are seeing you know the two groups more than we've had in the past like women and um, msn so so that, that has shown an upward trend in the past year. Yeah. And, and also don't forget that, you know, it, it may be because, because these, these are reported cases, yeah? And so it may be, as Marina said, that the numbers have gone down in, in drug users for whatever reason. But the nature of HIV is it, it's silent until you become symptomatic. So if there's infections percolating in sex workers and whoever else who don't, traditionally go for testing or be tested then you know we still don't know what's happening in, 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 in these groups so because of you know because we don't I mean these kinds of, of uh, passive reporting is may not necessarily reflect what's really happening you know we're not doing the the surveillance in, in risk groups that we should be. But do you think uh, something like um, what they do in other countries, voluntary testing, having the mobile units going around, would, we, would that help at this point in time? We have voluntary testing clinics but not like within the, the Ministry of... Not yeah. mobile, yeah. And not promoted well. Mm. Okay. Some people don't know where to go or you know, what it involves yeah. or that. Do you think like in terms of um, when it comes to testing, do you actually bring the testing to people rather than have testing? No, I no, I don't think I don't think there is sort of a barrier to testing apart from you know sort of the stigma and discrimination. I don't think there's physical barriers to testing. People can just go into any path lab and get themselves tested. So physical barrier is not the issue. It's more the, the stigma emotional and yeah. I mean, what do you mean by bringing the testing? You bring a testing unit to your kampong. Worse still, who's mm. going to come out? Yeah. You know when your neighbors can see. Sometimes people prefer to go far away and test. Yeah. Where they won't meet anyone they know. And a lot of some people also use the blood bank as a surrogate place. Yeah. Still. Mm. yeah. I mean, less so now because the, the, you know, they can get into trouble if they disclose certain facts about themselves. So, the two of y'all have been in this for, like, the longest <laughs> time. <laughs> Since it started? Not quite. 85? No, not that long. I haven't been there. I long. was still a medical student in 85, okay? <laughs> yeah, and I, I, still, I wasn't doing anything like this. No, I only started in 93. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, for me too, I guess, once I did infectious disease training. Yeah. So, I mean, you've more or less been at the, almost the start of when the infection started coming in in Malaysia. So, I mean, how has that changed so far? I mean, are we making any headway? Are you happy about how it's been handled, what still makes you angry? I mean, obviously we have made headway because, you know, from say from not having treatments, now we're having treatments. From not having harm reduction, now we have harm reduction. That's progress. But there's still a lot more that we can do. There's still a lot of uh, misinformation out there. Um, for instance, I just saw 
this uh, it's incredible this form I five i saw you, you put you it on that? facebook yeah? yes yeah. did you read it mm -hmm. it's it's not that much, but it was yeah the form five uh, syllabus for physical education and company uh, can just money and something and it's incredible the misinformation in there i mean it says that if you are gay you're going to have you're going to get aids you know which is not true and then it talks as if uh, Okay, sex rambang, you know, multiple partners. Pasanya mm. berbilangnya. But does that include polygamy? They seem to think that as long as you're married, you won't get anything. Which is like the worst sort of message because mm. we have a lot of married women who've been infected. Um, so, you know, this type of inaccuracies for young people is, is mm. very dangerous. Yeah, what. what what I think hasn't changed in, in a big way is that we can't seem to separate our moral, religious, uh, conservatism judgment versus the need for real public health response. Yeah. Um, you know, un until and unless we embrace that in its true sense, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. But how do we do that? I mean, do we, we, we do that by being... Mm -hmm sort of brave about it I think and 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 I mean you know it's it's for the for government agencies it's not so much yeah. for us because it it requires you know leadership exactly. to say and to set the tone yeah like, to you set know, this is a public health issue we will deal with it as a public health issue from yeah. public health perspective with public health professionals yeah and everyone else should just butt out like, yeah you know? But we have non-experts making a lot of policy in this country and somehow they're given the time of day. Weight or more weight. <laughs> you know, yeah. why should religious officers be deemed to know more about HIV than we do? Mm. But that's the way people act. As if, wow, what they say must be right. Because they are. Just because of who they are. Because of the religious yeah, yeah people are afraid, yeah. well I think people are afraid to challenge them yeah. you know as soon as me I mean I don't know they're afraid they go to hell if they you know right <laughs> if they contradict a religious person which is not true <laughs> but that's, that's like a that's a lot to ask for I mean every single time there's something that happens I mean not even in HIV uh, related issues the why is it a lot to yeah. ask for? Why, why it's a is health it a issue. Yeah. yeah. If you talk to them about, say, heart disease, mm -hmm. I mean, would you go and ask a religious person an opinion about heart disease? No. Because they're not expert on it. So why on earth, just because it's AIDS, we go and ask them? Because we think there is this moral side to it. Mm. Right. Right? Some people still can't get rid of. You know, it's still they still think, oh, if you're still putting you in blue boxes. Yeah. And I mean, you have to get rid of that. So I mean, how far has the council and you know been successful in removing those boxes? <laughs> Probably not very. <laughs> Yeah. Always be there. Yeah, always the yeah. There's always people. I mean, like like someone said on my Facebook comment, you know, nowadays people not only assert their right to their own opinion, they assert their right to their own facts. Mm -hmm. You know, so they think what they're saying is factual, um, even though it's one case or two cases or even none. It's, it's something they heard or read somewhere. You know? um, so that's what we're up against. But what can we do? All we can do, I think, is just keep the facts out there and point out the contradictions all the time. I think, I think as a country, we need to decide, you know, like we want to deal with, we want to be effective in dealing with this. And then, and then you look at it, you know, in a, in a sort of an objective manner and, and, and have dialogues and discussions with these people. I know it's not always easy, but... Something to, to come out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, instead of kind of... But, but it's, it's, it cannot be up to us alone, you know? Yeah. It, it, has to, it has to be a, you know, a government thing. 
it's, a, it's about leadership. I think <coughs> everywhere around the world, the one thing that keeps coming up that it is leadership or lack of it. In the countries where there has been leadership in the response, they've been effective, they've progressed. Where there's none, it's you know it's just slacked, and and then you see rising infections and and all sorts of problems. So you know where is the leadership um, in, in the country? And if you're just expecting it to be AIDS council or whatever, it's not good enough. It's not enough. So how do you rank? government involvement so far? Has it? I think it's improved, you know, like we, we have, uh, we have, there's, there's more more money and, and of course the, the go ahead for the harm reduction and all that, but in this big, in this big area where the, the separation of, uh, you know, the religious edicts versus the needs for, the need for public health response, that, that's been, that's been weak, yeah. So it's obviously not enough to just have... But you're right, I mean, it, it's not just in HIV AIDS where we can't seem to separate these things, you know, religion being a personal thing versus religion being the, the right of yeah. others to dictate. If there's anything that, that riles people out here, just to get the religious people involved, then there's this huge debate about, you know, what is right and what is wrong. Mm. You see, the, the trouble is, you know, we need them involved. We do need them involved, but in a positive way. Yeah. Um, and for that, they need to be educated about AIDS. Where we have educated them, they've been good, you know. But we are allowing people who are not very well educated to, to say things, do things, and, and it sets a tone um, for, for the public. And the public think it's right, you know. So it, this is the, the problem. It's not that we want to keep them out of it. I, I personally don't believe that they should be kept out of it entirely. But yeah. And of course, you know, the, if you could, you know, all those things that every religion teach, you know, sexual delays of, of sexual um, debut and all that and all that and all that. Oh, they're all good things in terms of HIV prevention, but it has to be balanced against the reality of what's happening on the ground. And, and, and that's where we just cannot seem to get our heads around, yeah. you know. You know, we're not saying that you know uh, the religious yeah. teachings are bad. In fact, I, I think religious if, I, if people can follow the religious teachings, we won't have the problem that we have right now. You know, and 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 so. But the point is, we they yeah. don't. I know. Yeah. And we're the ones having to deal with the reality of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, just just you walk through a hospital ward and and you see this is real life. Yeah. But you know, people who don't see that reality and keep talking about this abstract, theoretical, mm. wonderful ummah that we have, mm. it's good all the time, that's just not it, it doesn't exist. So it's almost like we live in two parallel worlds, yeah. the ideal one that they envisage, where there are no problems, and the one it's that we live in. Yeah. 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 And, and unfortunately, it's the real world <laughs> that has an impact on it. Real world costs money, yeah, the, the unreal one doesn't. Um, I don't know, what, what else could MAC, MAS do in the next few years? I mean, to capitalize on this apparent drop in numbers. We cannot let up though. We cannot say, okay, um, let's close shop. I can just concentrate on my university work, you know, because. <laughs> Um, we know that there are pockets where, uh, you know, infection is on the rise and, and, and we know there are hundreds and thousands of people, not hundreds, there are thousands and thousands of people out there who are infected and who have no access, you know, who haven't got good access to treatment. We know that there's lots of single mothers who still need, you know, care and support. So there's plenty of work. And, and in terms of prevention, I mean, you know, I don't know, I've, I've heard quotes that there are 150,000 sex workers in Malaysia, right? So what percentage of those are getting adequate HIV prevention messages and interventions? So there's plenty of work for, for us, Audrey, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> because of things to do. Yeah, because, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, because... 
Because I really, I mean, those numbers, it, it, yeah, as Marina said, it'd be interesting to know who, what proportion are drug users and, and, and all that. Because because we don't have this, this surveillance of so-called risk groups, um, whether that's a, a real trend, I mean, it, it trend in, in some, maybe some, some groups, but may, you know, we may be missing in others. And, and we should learn the lessons of, like, say, in Australia or in America, where they forgot that there are always new generations of people. Right. Yeah. So if you think that you're doing well, and you start to slack off, and what, what do you know? And, you know, new infections came up. So you have to sustain it. Well, just from my own clinical observation um, in, in the ward, in the clinics of um, young gay men coming in, newly infected um, with both HIV and secondary syphilis. Um, so, you know, which was not what I used to observe, say, 10 years ago. Um, and then, yeah, and, and the one and, and the women, of course, you know that that's been borne out in in the numbers.